Tonight we have our uh, fellowship and worship time, and I uh, hope you are looking forward to that. And if you are planning on uh, participating in the singing part, Kelsey would like for you to be here about 530. That way we can make sure we got our sound checks and not everybody's in line and we know what we got going on there. Uh, for the rest of you, come at 6 and we're going to worship and then we're going to eat. Amen. Fellowship. So uh, keep that in mind for tonight. That starts at 6 o'clock. Uh, prayer meeting tomorrow at 6 uh, here at the church. So uh, if you can make it for prayer time, I know that that will be a blessing to you. On Wednesday nights, we have our, yes, ma'am. On Wednesday nights, we've been having our Bible study on the book of James. I think we've got through the first few verses, uh, but God's been good to us. So, uh, And then our classes, Sister Sheila's class, our youth class with Tabitha and uh, uh, her team, and then uh, Brother Major's class, the uh, young adult class. So that's going on Wednesday night, so I encourage you to be a part of that. Uh, this coming Thursday is our National Day of Prayer. So uh, we're going to put some emphasis on prayer that day. So I uh, encourage you to, if there's a, an event somewhere near you and you're able to go, I uh, encourage you to be a part of that. If not, spend your time in prayer That's that day for yourself. Next Sunday there will be a table shower for Tabitha for the new baby. It's a boy. And uh, just thank God for what he's doing in their lives. Uh, also next Sunday morning our seniors are serving at the Christian Ministries uh, at the soup kitchen here in town. So uh, there should be a sign-up sheet out there for that, so make sure you signed up for that if you're going to be a part of that. Uh, Sunday evening, the youth minister will be uh, ministering at the uh, Gastonia Mission, and uh, I believe that, uh, ladies, there it is. Ladies, you're also invited to the mission on Sunday night uh, at the Gastonia Street Mission. They're going to be uh, having a, a thing for you guys that night. So that's all next Sunday evening. Uh, there's nurse minister. Cool. Um, Let's go to Lord in prayer. They took her now? Really? Oh, okay. That's new. Uh, Jessica Priscina, I was wondering where they were. She was scheduled for surgery tomorrow to have her cesarean done, so they're doing it now. So uh, remember Jessica as they're uh, having their baby today. So I'll have to check on her later. Uh, Paula is doing much better. She is uh, at the hospital, but she's having her MRI done. Folks, uh, I just watched God just take her from every stroke symptom that you could think of when I was in that room with her uh, at the at the center. We were at the, well, her and Rachel were at the CPC, and Rachel called me. And I went down there and, and uh, I got there before the ambulance did. And her hand was drawn up, foot was drawn up. She couldn't put her words together. It was severe, and I just watched God through the day. She just started talking clear. Her hands started feeling coming back. I just watched God just turn it around. So uh, she is going to have a she is actually probably in in now or probably finishing up getting her MRI done. They'll read that. And more than likely, she said, "If I'm there tonight, I'm gonna sing." So <laughs> so uh, just pray the Lord to touch her and give her strength. Uh, James Dudley will be having his surgery this Thursday. Uh, they'll be removing that uh, uh, cyst or whatever that thing is that's in him that growth. Uh, they'll be moving that Thursday. And Sylvia Clark, uh, who's in need of hip surgery, continue to remember her. Susan and Joe, Susan actually just texted me. They're on the way. They got got caught in some traffic with a wreck. Uh, I, I reckon that's where the half the rest of the people are too. Uh, <laughs> they're all caught in the wreck. But uh, uh, she said, it's not us, but we're caught up in a wreck. But uh, so remember her. She's dealing with these back issues. Hazel Stanley, who's uh, broke her hip, I'll we'll pray for her. Glenn Davis, who's uh, in need of a touch from the Lord, dealing with throat cancer. Hunter Birdsell, this is a friend of Noah's. Uh, he, uh, his family is needing a miracle, financial miracle. We pray for the Lord to touch uh, him and his family that God would touch them. Remember Marcus, he's dealing with an intestinal infection uh, that God would touch him and minister to him. Daniel Ross, Tracy's last name is Ross. Uh, Daniel's in need of uh, complete healing and restoration. Daniel's our painter, uh, the one that's been painting all these pictures and stuff and comes with Cat and them. Uh, he, he needs a healing. God, uh, he needs God to touch him. He's dealing with uh, uh, some issues in his stomach, his nerves that helps his food to digest, that cause, it causes his stomach to do what it needs to do to get the food to digest. His, those nerves are not working properly. So he's having some problems with that. So remember Daniel, if you will. Uh, remember Violet Gravely, who, who's on the ventilator, that God would touch her and minister her. And then Hunter Gidge, who's dealing with uh, stage four cancer. Remember Carolyn Lu Caroline Luther, uh, who's deaf, going blind, dealing with some uh, diabetes. Oh, so pray for her. Pray for Sunday Styles, uh, who's got two blood clots and 
one in each lung. So remember Sonny and then Edna uh, is dealing with ha half a, am I reading that right? Half an ankle bone, she broke it. All right, so remember Edna, that God would touch her minister. I generally go back there and read through these so I know what's going on, but she's added some new ones since I last went back there. Yeah. Praise God. Wow, awesome. We did. We had special prayer for Wednesday night. God did. I'm telling you, I felt the Holy Ghost when we prayed for you. I know God did something. Amen. Praise the Lord. I love a good praise report. Amen. What a way to start a Sunday morning. Just praise reports all around. God's a good God. Appreciate you being in the Lord's house. Let's stand and go to the Lord in prayer. And as you're standing, if you have an unspoken need at this time, make it known by the lift of hand. Amen. People are wondering in as we talk, so it's all good. We're going to ask the Lord to have his way and move into service and minister in a mighty way. We're believing and trusting for the Lord's will to be done. Thank you again for coming out to worship with us today. God's good. Amen. Amen. That's all right. Go ahead and give him some praise. Serve a great God. All right. So let's ask the Lord to have his way and to move and minister. We're going to get right to the worship service. Let's pray together. Father, we love you so much. Thank you for the opportunity once again that you've given us to come into your house, God. You're such a good God. We bless your holy name. I ask you, Lamb of God, that you would minister in this service this morning, God, that you would have your way, that you would speak into hearts and lives in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you would touch these needs and requests that have been mentioned, Father, even those that have been recognized by the lifting of hands. I pray, God, that you would move in a mighty way. Lord, that you would touch and minister in every need. Bring healing, bring deliverance, bring restoration. God, I pray that you would do only what you can do, I pray, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. For the praise reports this morning, for what you did for Sheila and what you've done for Paula. God, how you've turned these situations around. We're believing and trusting, Lord, that your will is going to be done, that your name's going to be glorified, God. I just believe you for that today. I pray, God, that you would anoint everything that's done today. Anoint our musicians, our singers. Use them, Lamb of God. Let them be uh, anointed of you to lead us into a time of worship. And, God, that we would enter in together, God, and worship you and praise you. And as we do, God, we pray that you would come down and inhabit the praises of your people. And God, meet with us today. We need your presence. We need your power. We need your strength, I pray, in the name of Jesus. I pray that you be with those that are unable to be with us today, God. I, I pray for the Russell family as they're traveling today, that you would touch them and minister to them. I pray for uh, David and, and, and Jessica and their family, God, as they're going through this cesarean this morning. I pray, God, that you would minister healing in their bodies, God, and that you would touch them and help everything to be well and help the baby, God, and everything to go well there. I pray, God, that your will be done. I pray, God, that you would touch and move and minister in, in, in Paula's life and help this MRI reading, God, just to be a demonstration of your healing and your power, God. Show that you moved and that you ministered, God. And that you, 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 God, I just pray that you would demonstrate what only you can do, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Father, for those of us that are here today, I pray that we would enter into your courts with thanksgiving into your gates with praise. God, that we would, man, man, that we would just minister unto you, God, that we would serve you with our worship today, God, that you would be honored and glorified in all that's done and all that's said. Touch those that are working in the nursery today, God. I pray that you would minister to them and strengthen them. Touch Pastor Ramos and the Spanish minister today, God. I pray that you would anoint them and use them in a mighty way. Bless them today, I pray, in the name of Jesus. God, God, if you allow us to get into your word today, I pray that you would use the word in a mighty way, God, that you would speak through the word and that you would touch folks by your power of your word, I pray in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you again for the blessing it is to serve you. The blessing it is, God, to be in your house, to be together. For we're two or three gathered in your name, God, you're in the midst, and we bless your name today. I give you all the praise. I give you all the glory. I give you all the honor. You are worthy of it all, and we bless you today. And we ask all that we ask in Jesus' name, and all of God's people said, come on, all of God's people said, amen. amen. Would you turn to about two or three people there next to you? Welcome to the house of God. We love you. Thank you so much. Let's worship together.
worship, we worship you. We 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 worship the name of Jesus is lifted high, lifted high, lifted high. The name.
worship you in this place this morning, God. You are so worthy. God, your praise will ever be on our lips, God. It is you and you alone we are here to glorify, God. You're so worthy of all the praise, Jesus. Your love is devoted like a ring of solid gold, like a vow that is tested, like a covenant of old. Your love is enduring through the winter rain and beyond the horizons with mercy for today. Cause faithful you have been and faithful you will be you pledge yourself to me and that's why i sing your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips ever be on my lips you father the orphan your kindness makes us whole and you shoulder our weakness and your strength becomes our own now you're making me like you and clothing me in white bringing beauty from ashes for you will have your bride free of all her guilt and rid of all her shame and known by her true name and that's why i sing your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips you will be praised you will be praised with angels and saints we sing worthy are you lord and you will be praised you will be praised with angels and saints we sing worthy are you lord you will be praised you will be praised with angels and saints we sing worthy are you lord and you will be praised you will be praised with angels and saints we sing worthy are you lord and that's why i sing your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips Ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Cause faithful you have been, and faithful you will be. You pledge yourself to me. Are you thankful for his faithfulness this morning? Cause faithful you have been. And faithful you will be you pledge yourself to me and that's why I sing your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips 
ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, and you will be praised, you will be praised, with angels and saints we sing worthy are you Lord, and you will be praised, you will be praised, with angels and saints we sing worthy, are you Lord, and you will be praised, you will be praised, with angels and saints we sing worthy, are you Lord, you will be praised, you will be praised, with angels and saints we sing worthy, are you Lord, and I exalt thee, I exalt for that. bless your name in this place this morning, God. You're so worthy, Jesus. God, my soul sings this morning to you alone. You are so worthy of all our praise, Jesus. Sing your song. 
worship His holy name.
we stand in awe of you this morning, Jesus.
Somebody give God praise. He's a good God. Amen. Thank you, guys. You can be seated for just a moment. God's good. He's always on time. He always has the answer. He knows where we're at, knows what we have need of. Has already sent the answer before, well, even while we're asking, the answer is already on the way. Amen. Even in times of trouble and despair and the unknown, God says, I just want you to know I'm still here. He's a faithful God. Amen. 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 So uh, I uh, asked Tabitha, I want her to share with you uh, just for a second here uh, something God did for her this week that she shared with me on Wednesday morning. Uh, how that God just showed up in a time of despair. How that God still showed himself that, hey, I just want you to know I'm still here and that I'm listening. You know, sometimes uh, we get in moments where we don't know if he's even there. Let's just be honest. There's moments we don't feel him near. There's moments that we're not really uh, sure if God's even hearing us when we pray. Can I get somebody to say amen? You know what I'm talking about. Even in moments of despair, God has a way of still showing up and saying, hey, I'm still here. Would you uh, listen to what Tabitha's going to share and let it bless you as it blessed me this week? I'll try to get through this. Um, I uh, went to the funeral home the day that we had the receiving of friends and um, I just wanted some alone time with my dad. And um, it was just him and I in this room. I had shut the doors. And um, if you guys don't know, um, we have not told anyone the name of um, the baby. And so I was talking to my dad. And, you know, I had made sure during all his sickness that I told him exactly what I wanted him to know. But... The moment that somebody passes and you can no longer speak to them, you're flooded with so many things that you just, you just want to reiterate. You just want them to know so bad. So that's what I did. I went over there and I was telling my dad all these things that I wanted him to know. And I told him the baby's name, and I'm hoping I don't slip up and actually accidentally say it. <laughs> but I told him the baby's name, among many other things, and... And I went and sat down, and I was there about an hour and a half, and I sat down and I started talking to God and just praying. And honestly, I didn't expect him to say anything to me because I just hadn't heard from him. I felt him. I just didn't hear anything, but I knew he was there. But I was just talking to him, and I said, God, I know my dad's not in that body, but if you could just let him know, if you could just let him hear everything that I said, I'd really appreciate it. And I ended it. I finished praying and it took me a while to leave but I eventually left and I didn't think anything else about it my mom called me the next morning and she said that my dad came to her in a dream that night and she said that he was telling her I'm okay it's okay everything's gonna be okay and, and I'm good and then she said She said that he told her, tell the baby's name, that Papa loves him, even though I didn't get to meet him on earth. And my mom kept saying, who's that? Who's that? And he just disappeared. That was it. My mom called me and she told me this, and she said, who is such and such, Tabitha? And I said, that's the baby's name. And that proved two things to me. One that it really is true that if you're saved and you love God that the moment that you leave your body here you're in the presence of the Lord because I honestly don't feel like God would have given him that message and allowed him to come to my mom if he wasn't with the Lord and two the Lord knows my heart and my one of my weaknesses is I doubt and he knew out of all the things that I told my dad that I could pick apart anything else I could have said well I've already said this to so-and-so or you know there would be an, a there would have been a way for me to say that couldn't really be you know but he took the one thing that there's no way I can pick that apart 
he took the one thing that knew he knew would grip my heart and catch my attention to say he got everything else you said and I've never left your side and I'm right there and I'm just so thankful that our Lord is so gracious and so merciful and so loving that in our times of need he's right there and he's so close and I feel him through the pain I'm clinging to him and I just I want to give God the glory and I hope that encourages somebody to to know that even when you don't think he's there he's there For those of you that are wondering, my name's Joel. Of course, the daddy's name's Joel. I told her Daniel Joel would be a good name, and she didn't like that name. I don't know why, but anyway, that's not the name. She don't like mine or Joel's name. I don't know, but anyway, <laughs> God's faithful, amen? Amen. I'm glad he always shows up, and he always knows, knows what's going on, amen? So, kids, I've got some good news for you. You get to listen to me today. The Russells are out of town, so the kids get to hang out with me today. So no kids worship this morning. So let's get right into the scripture. We're going to go back to Isaiah chapter 61. And uh, we're continuing our, our series. And just as a text, we're taking these first two verses of Isaiah 61. Uh, last week, we talked a little bit about, uh, of course, you know that uh, last Sunday morning I preached. And then Sunday afternoon, I took off and went to Duke Hospital, be with Tabitha, her family, uh, with the passing of her dad. And. Uh, so it's it's uh, it's been a, a roller coaster ride this week. I was actually at a funeral yesterday. I shared with y'all one of the guys that drove for me. His name was Chris. His mom passed away, and and uh, and I tell you that uh, if I can put it this way, that won't no furniture, no funeral right there. That was shouting and on your feet and clapping and having yourself a good old time. One of them, one of them kind. I felt right at home. I I, I was a woo glory. I jumped up one time and. Uh, Woo, we had a good time. But anyway, so anyway, I've, I've already been in church this weekend. We're going to do it again. Amen. Isaiah chapter 61. All right, guys, stand with me if you would. Appreciate you all being here. Got some newer faces with us today. They started. You let them know we appreciate them being here. Isaiah 61, verses 1 and 2. The Bible says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. So going back to verse 1, it says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. And this is what I want to talk to you about over the next uh, few moments here, a little bit more, dig a little bit more. We, we're, we'll get nowhere near finishing today, but... Uh, I want to talk to you about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and just ask God to have his way. Father, we love you so much. Thank you again for the opportunity that you've given me to stand before your people and to declare your word. As I prayed many times, God, and I even pray again this morning, God, I pray that your word would come through me and that it not be my word, my thought, my opinion, but, Lord, that I would speak what you would have me to speak, I pray in the name of Jesus. God, that you would declare your word and speak it into your people today. God, let us be challenged to go deeper in you to go further in what you are speaking to us, God. I pray that your will be done. Father, we love you. We give you the glory. We give you the praise and the honor for all that's done and all that will be accomplished, Father. I pray that your anointing will rest on me. Speak through me. And let your will be done. I pray it in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, amen. You may be seated. If you've not been a part of the services uh, up to this point, I think we've had two or three services that we've been preaching on this particular message uh, I'd encourage you to go to our website, and uh, you can watch those there and get caught up because uh, I'm going to do my best not to go backwards as much as I can because if I do, I'll just get caught up in what I've already been preaching, and um, that's not beneficial for moving forward. Amen? Amen. Thank you again for being here today. I want to go. I want. I do want to back up about two verses of what I preached uh, last Sunday morning because it's just going to tie in what we're talking about here. We were talking about the baptism of the Holy Ghost as it pertains to Jesus, and how the how that uh, the Holy Spirit was operational even through the birth of Jesus and the life of Jesus and the ministry of Jesus. How that God uh, anointed Him and used Him, and and the Scriptures talking about in in, in the Book of John, the Gospel. Uh, Jesus, uh, John rather, is told that he whom you see the Spirit of God resting on or moving on, 
That, that, that is he. He's the Messiah. And so he said the spirit, he saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it abode upon him. Now, there's been some question. As a matter of fact, someone asked me uh, uh, Wednesday night, and, and I was speaking to her, and they, we were talking about Jesus having the, having the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And, and, and if you go into John chapter 7, Jesus told his disciples, he said, listen, you, you will drink of the cup that I drank of. You will be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with. Now, up until this point, they had been baptized in water, so the baptism that Jesus is talking about here had to be the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And so uh, the question was asked, was Jesus baptized at the, with the baptism of the Holy Ghost at the uh, water baptism when he come up? out of the water and the spirit descended on him that's what i believe took place that's what i believe transpired and 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 the, the real question is is if jesus was god if jesus was the son of god if jesus and and and, and the father and the spirit are one if this is what really we, we really believe then why would jesus have to come and, and and receive the baptism if he is god so let me let me kind of give you my synopsis of that jesus came to earth in the flesh uh, he, he told John at his water baptism, it is necessary that I be baptized by you. Uh, it, it was an example to us. He came as an example to us what we were to do and how we were to live. So he was baptized in water just like we should be baptized in water. And then he was baptized in the Holy Ghost just like we should seek to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. And the Bible tells us uh, in the book of Mark chapter 10, uh, verses 38 through 39, Jesus is speaking again to his disciples. And he said, uh, you don't know what you're asking. Can you drink of the cup that I drink of and be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with? And they said it to him, we can. And Jesus said, said unto them, you shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of, and with the baptism that I'm baptized, you shall be baptized. And again, he says in John 3 and 34, he said, for he whom God has sent, speak of the words of God, for God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. Now look, now look what he's saying here. He's saying, I've, I've given unto Jesus the fullness of the power of the Holy Ghost. And so from these scriptures, we see that it's clear that Jesus Christ had the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which he received after, immediately after his baptism in water by John. And he stated in Mark 10, 38, and he said, you shall be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. So at this time in his life, he had the baptism that the apostles had not yet received, but would receive in a further date. So the statement of Mark 10, 1038 could not refer again to water baptism because the apostles were baptized in water and, and it was the cup. Listen, it, it, could refer, it could not refer to the suffering of Christ as some suppose because that's what the cup was referred to in this same verse. Look at Matthew 26 and 39. Jesus is speaking here, or Christ is rather is praying in the garden and he said, Lord, I'm praying that this cup pass from me. And so Jesus declares, you will have the baptism that I have. You will suffer and drink of the same cup that I will drink of. So Jesus is telling them, this is your future. This is your destiny. This is your purpose. You're going to suffer the way I suffered, and you're going to be baptized the same way that I was baptized with. So we, we see this, that this cup of suffering which the apostles were to drink, and they did drink from it because tradition t- tells us that the apostles, every one of them except for John, suffered martyrdom. Now John John, he suffered some horrific uh, judgments and punishments that he had to go through. There were some horrific things that John went through. He was boiled in oil. He was put on an island all by himself. So John suffered also, drank from that same cup that Jesus drank from. And so, so we see here that they were indeed eventually baptized with that baptism which Jesus was baptized because on the day of Pentecost, they were baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Again, John 3.34 states that God did not give the Spirit by measure to Jesus. And so what this scripture indicates is, is that the baptism of the Holy Ghost really is the Spirit without measure moving on, filling, and surrounding the believer. And he takes up his abode in the body of a believer in all his fullness. So prior to the day of Pentecost, men were moved on, people, men were filled, men were empowered, men had the uh, the spirit of God in different degrees. But at the but at and after Pentecost, God gave the spirit without measure to all who would receive Him. So Jesus was the first person to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So let's let's look at this a little bit further. I want I want to take you and show you that the Holy Ghost or the baptism of the Holy Ghost was not given unto anybody except Jesus until the day of Pentecost. So let's go to Luke chapter 1, verse 15. 
Luke chapter 1, verse 15, it said, For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. So basically, this, this scripture here is talking about John the Baptist, and it says that John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb, but John never did receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. There, 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 there's a difference again here. So he's filled, but, but he's not baptized, and I'm going to show you this. Matthew 3, 11 and 14, this is John speaking. John said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear, for he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the shaft with unquenchable fire. Then comes Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him, but John forbade him, saying, have I, I have need to be baptized of you, and you come to me? So John said, listen, I need the baptism that you're going to bring. He just testified of Jesus. He said, he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. He goes to John, Jesus comes to John and says, I want to be baptized in water. John says, Jesus, wait a minute. I don't want, I don't want to baptize you. I want you to baptize me. I need the, baptize, the baptism that you're bringing. But remember, he was filled with the Holy Ghost in his mother's womb. But now he's saying to Jesus, I know you're going to baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire, and I want to be baptized with what you're baptizing with. So you see the difference. The Bible talks about how the Spirit of God would move upon men of old. How that the Scripture, in the Scripture it teaches about how the, how the Holy Ghost would move upon men like Elijah and Elisha. How the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of God would move upon the face of the deep as it talked about in the point of creation. So we see that the Holy Spirit was at work, but the fullness of the power of the Holy Ghost, the fullness or the without measure movement did not come until it came into the life of Jesus, but then, but, but, but then at the day of Pentecost. Let's take this a step further. John 7 and 39. This is Jesus speaking. This spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Jesus said, I must needs go away because if I do not go away, the Comforter will not come. Now again, you've got to understand that the Holy Ghost was in operation. He has to be in operation. The Holy Spirit is the convictor. The Holy Spirit is the one that draws men unto God, draws men unto the Father. So the Holy Ghost had to be in operation. We see again that he moved upon different men, of, men and women in the Old Testament, how that he would move upon them. But in the fullness, the Bible said, with Jesus, he gave him the Spirit without measure. So this scripture teaches us here and shows us that Jesus was not yet glorified, so the Holy Ghost had not yet been given. So it's clear that the ministry of the Lord was to baptize with the Holy Ghost, and John felt his need of this baptism. So even though he was filled with the Holy Ghost, he had not yet been baptized with the Holy Ghost, for the scripture clearly stated that the Holy Ghost was not to be given until Jesus was glorified. Let's go a little further. John 14, beginning with verse 16. Jesus is praying. He said, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. So Jesus is talking about the Holy Ghost here. He said, he dwells with you and shall be in you. See, you see the word here. This is the word that Jesus used. Jesus is speaking and saying, listen, this is not something that, that the fullness. So, so literally what I'm painting a picture of you here is, is that there is a definite move of the Spirit of God that takes place in your life for you to come to salvation. There is a definite move of the Spirit of God that takes place in your life in order for you to become sanctified. You won't know that you're unclean except the Spirit of God convict you and show you these things. And there is a definite move of the Holy Ghost that comes on your life where you are baptized in the Holy Ghost. So the Spirit of God is operational in all these three movements that take place in your life. So, so from salvation to sanctification to the baptism of the Holy Ghost, we see even in the Gospels of what Jesus is laying out the picture here. Jesus is saying, listen, there, there's, there's moments where the Spirit of God will move on you or the Spirit of God will speak to you but it is, a, it is necessary to save you or to sanctify you. But then there's a moment where he shall be in you. He takes abode. He's in control. 
He's the one. And I, I'm, I'm going to try not to sidestep here. Look at John 15 and 26. He said, when the, but, but when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. Now, again, he's speaking in future tense. Jesus said, when he comes, he's not here yet. John 7 again says that the Holy Ghost has not yet come because Jesus had not yet been glorified. So he's saying in John 15, he said, When the Comforter has come, whom I will send unto you from the Father. John 16 and 7. He said, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Again, the Holy Ghost had not yet come because Jesus had not yet been glorified. Jesus is speaking to his disciples in Luke 24 and 49. He said, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. So Jesus tells his disciples, Listen, fellas, I, I, and, and if you'll go back in the Scriptures, you'll see where there was a moment that Jesus breathed upon them and said, Receive you the Holy Ghost. Jesus, Jesus prayed for them that they were moving the Spirit. The Bible talks about how that he sent them out two by two, empowered by the Spirit of God, and they come back rejoicing because even the devils were subject unto them. So the Spirit of God moved on them. The Spirit of God filled them. The Spirit of God touched them and anointed them, but yet they had yet to walk in the fullness because now Jesus is saying, listen, I'm going to send the promise of my Father upon you, and I want you to tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be in due with power from on high. Now let's break this verse down. I've done this many times, but I'm going to do it again for context's sake. The Bible says here, I'm going to send the promise of my Father, but tarry. The word tarry literally means to sit down and to do nothing. Jesus said, I am going to empower you for service. I'm going to empower you and strengthen you for the journey that's ahead. I'm going to give you a strength that, that, that absolutely is going to boggle your mind what I'm about to do in you. But I need you to not do anything until you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He said, tarry in the city of Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a place of peace. Jerusalem is a place of worship. Jerusalem is a place of, of sacrifice. This is the place that we need to come to. You, you're seeking for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You, you're you're, you're going to find it in a place of peace. You're going to find it in a place of worship. You're going to find it in a place of sacrifice. You're going to find it in a place when you've, you've offered your body as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. This is the place where you're going to find God flooding His gift into your life. When you get to that place where you're saying to God, God, I refuse to go a step further until I am empowered by you. I'm not going to walk in my own street. I'm not going to walk in my own ability. I'm not going to walk in my own resources. I am totally and wholeheartedly committing my life unto you and I'm giving everything that I am to you God so that I can lay my life down so that God you can take full control. Let me tell you if you're not allowing God to be in full control of your life then you are not walking in the fullness of the spirit. That means your thoughts. That means your talk. That means your walk. That means everything about you. You are led by the spirit of God. Remember what the scripture said. As many as be led by the spirit Spirit of God, they be the sons of God. And if you'll walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So Jesus tells his disciples, I don't want you teaching. I don't want you preaching. I don't want you praying. I want you to tarry in a place of worship. I want you to tarry in a place of sacrifice. I want you to tarry in my presence until you be endued with power from on high. That word endued literally means to be enveloped, to be wrapped up in. God wants the Holy Spirit not only in you, but about you, around you, leading you, guiding you, comforting you. Listen, He is our source of life as long as we abide on this earth. He is the one that is going to comfort you in times of mourning. He is the one that's going to give you peace in times of distress. He is the one that's going to convict you in times of failure. There is a power in the Spirit of God that God wants to move in your life and establish you and help you to be able to stand when everybody else is kneeling. God wants to give you a power and a strength that you can overcome when everybody else thinks you're going to fail. There is power in the Spirit of God and God says I want you to tarry. I want you to wait for it. Don't sit and listen. Don't get caught up in the world's parade. But get yourself saturated in the presence of God. Get yourself saturated in the throne room of God until you be endued with power from on high. We live in this modern society with, with so many get-quick schemes. 
and we, are, we have tempered ourselves to think that somehow or another God's got to move on our time scale. We, 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 we think, you know, we, we've deceived ourselves into believing that, that we're going to put God on the stopwatch and say, I need you to do it by X amount of time. We do it in our church services. So I, I, I'm not expecting you to, you know, tear yourself up here. But we do it in our church services. We tell God, you know, I have people ask me all the time, what time your services start? 1030. What time do they end? <laughs> I don't know. You don't have a set time? No. I'm done when the Holy Ghost is done. People need to get up and go. They can get up and go. If people got things they got to do, go do them. But when God is done, that's when I'm done. When God says that's enough, that's when I say that's enough. It's time to go home. Listen, we got to understand. And listen, even, even as a minister, as a pastor, I even feel the pressure. And you might say, well, preacher, I ain't putting no pressure on you. There's times you still feel the pressure that you got to kind of wrap it up in a certain amount of time and get it done. I wish to God that we could get the freedom of the Holy Ghost back in the service again. That we don't have to, listen, that we don't have to worry about coming back for a Sunday evening service because God just dosed us so much in the morning service that we get so overwhelmed and flooded that we're not thinking about lunch. We're not thinking about afternoon activities. We're saying, oh God, have your way in us. God, we want to see a move of the upper room. Experience, God, of your power and your presence in the midst of your people once again. Lord, we want to be endued with power from on high. But he said, you got to tarry until. I'll tell you something. If I go to a restaurant and I'm hungry and I want to order some food, Tracy and I went to a restaurant the other night, and we sat there, and, 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 and this is the honest truth. There wasn't, in this restaurant, there might, there might have been 10 customers in there. W- wasn't many. And we got there before this other family, and there was a family of four sitting a couple tables from us. And, and we were sitting there, and we had already ordered our food, and we were sitting there doing our thing. And I, 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 I watched as this other family that come in after us, they got their food. I looked at Tracy, I said, I sure hope they called in. Well, I'm hungry, you know. But you know what I did? I tarried because I knew the food was coming. Because every now and then the lady walked by and said, we ain't forgot you. We're just we getting your food together right now. You know what happens with God sometimes? You sit there and you're waiting on the Lord. And there's moments where you're like, God, you should have, you already moved in that person's life. God, you already done it for that person. God, I don't understand why you ain't done it. But every now and then, God will come by and say, don't you worry. I ain't forgot you. I'll be right with you. There's times God comes by and says, can I, can I just give you a little refill of tea? Or can I just, you know, make you comfortable here? Because I want you to know that I, I, I've got what I said I was going to promise you. I'm going to bring it. Listen, there's moments that God will bring a little nugget in your life to let you know. There's moments that God will give a mom a dream to tell the name that I'm not supposed to say either. But to tell the name and say the thing. Things that, I'm telling you, there's times that God will do that to say, listen, I know where you're at. I know what you're dealing with, and I've still got the answer. Don't you think for a moment that I forgot what's going on in your life. I just want you to wait until I want you to tarry until I do what I said I would do. Listen, we get so impatient. We get so out of our mind because we want it yesterday, but God is saying, if you'll just wait on me, I like the way Isaiah put it, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles they shall run and not be weary they'll walk and not faint I come to tell somebody today that if you'll just wait on the Lord God's got his promise for you the Lord's going to do it in your life all you got to do is wait on him somebody say wait on the Lord God said if you'll wait tarry and wait until you be endued with power from on high God said, I don't want you to be lifted up emotionally. I don't want you to get in the hype. I don't want you to get lost in the fray. I want to give you something that's real. That whenever all hell breaks loose, you can still put your foot one foot in the other and tell the devil, I'm still walking. I want to give you a power when the enemy in the world stone everything they can at you. You've still got a strength to be able to say, I'm still walking with the Lord. God wants to give you the kind of strength to let the world know you might try to knock me down, but I'm getting back up because there's a power inside of me that's not my own. It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. I'm telling somebody today, tear it and wait for the promise of God. Peter said, it's for you, your children. This morning, the Lord our God shall call. This is not something that, that this is not something that, that happened prior to Pentecost. This is something that we're living in one of the greatest ages. 
of time, of history, of the movement of the Holy Ghost. This is where we have to be real careful because there's so much misteaching and heresy. You see, what I'm trying to do today is show you through the Scriptures what the Scripture says about this. I'm not trying to give you my spin, Church of God spin, Pentecostal holiness spin. I'm not trying to give you four square spin. I'm trying to tell you what the Scriptures are saying about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I pray I haven't failed to do that this morning. But I I want you to see that this is exactly what God wants you to do. He wants you to tarry until you be endued. And you got to tarry in that place of Jerusalem. you got to tarry in that place of worship and sacrifice and, and, and peace. God wants you in that place. God wants you to enter into that place. Listen, you, you, I, 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 my, this is no one impersonal thing, but I got I got to go here. I, you know, my, my wife was in the restroom this morning, and I had to go to the restroom, uh, and, and so I went to the girls' restroom, and Kessel was in there, and she was just standing in front of the mirror. I said, "Babe." Daddy got to go. Can you can you give me a moment, you know? And, and so uh, Kess was just in the mirror doing her makeup and stuff, and she stepped out. And, and when she stepped out, this is the honest truth, my daughter, Kessie, was preparing for church, but she wasn't just preparing with makeup and fixing her hair and getting herself together. She had worship music playing on her telephone that she left on the counter. And I was, sit, I, I was there in the bathroom, and I could just feel the presence of God. I, I, you know why? Because she said, you know what, I'm going into a place of peace. I'm going into a place of worship. I, I, I'm not sitting here trying to figure out what happened in the, in the politics today. I'm not trying to figure out what happened in the news today. I'm not worried about what's going on in the sports world today. I'm just going to enter into worship because I'm about to go into the presence of God. That situation when it broke down yesterday and, and Paula and Rachel, they were the only one at the center and, and all that stuff began to happen. Paula told me later, she said, let me tell you something. I was so proud of my daughter because she had the right response. And I said, what happened, Paula? She said, just as soon as she got me sit down, she began to sing and pray and talk to the Lord let me tell you something about the power of the Holy Ghost listen that stroke was affecting Paula's body that stroke was messing with her speech she could put one word together from another but we laid hands on her and began to pray and then all of a sudden the Holy Ghost began to witness through her and let me tell you she didn't stammer with the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost was speaking through that lady as the power of the tongues began to come through her there was no stammering there was no worrying about putting words together the Holy Ghost was just as clear in his dialect he knew what he was doing because God was moving in that room let me tell you your response to your troubles your response to your circumstances ought to be to run into the presence of God and say God you're my source you're my healer God you can make a way right now and we're trusting in you right now in the name of Jesus we knew the Holy Ghost was moving through her and speaking through her Boy, the, the Lord, you know the ambulance drivers were coming and I was already processing my mind thinking okay how am I explain this you know, they already know I called because she's not putting words together. Here she is stammering in tongues and talking in tongues. I'm going to have to explain this to the ambulance people, you know. It was funny because the Holy Ghost would move on her and God just spoke as clear as a bell. And, and then Rachel was singing this particular song. It was about how, how uh, she had a fight with the devil and, and, and she won. And, and, and Paula was having a fight with Jesus. She, she couldn't put it together. She said, I don't know why I said that. Paula was fighting with Jesus and Rachel was fighting the devil. She just she said, I don't know why I was fighting. I wasn't fighting with Jesus. I want Jesus to know I was fighting for him. But she couldn't put her words together. Hey, listen, even in times of distress, I like the way Paul puts it. Paul says, when we don't know what we ought to pray, when I don't know what to say, when I don't know what the words I need to put together, when my English language isn't enough to be able to pull it all together, then the Spirit himself prays for me with groanings and utterings which cannot be understood. Let me tell you something. There's a beauty in having the baptism of the Holy Spirit in your life because when you don't know what to say, he does. Listen, it might not be just in prayer to God. Sometimes he might give you a word of prophecy. He might give you a word of knowledge to speak into somebody's life. And let me tell you, friend, there's such a beautiful thing when God moves and God knows what he's doing. I was praying for my sister the other night, and I promise, in my flesh, I was struggling. I didn't know what in the world. I thought I was way in left field somewhere, but I just kept speaking what God was telling me to speak, and she confirmed it. When I got outside, she said, oh, brother, you was right where you know. Let me tell you, when God gives you the word, you just go ahead and speak the word. Your flesh might say, you crazy. You shouldn't say what you're saying. You shouldn't do what you're doing. But if you know the Spirit of God, and you hear His voice, and you begin to speak and declare what God's telling you to speak, I'm telling you, God will move, and God will be glorified, and you will be blessed because God's spirit and God's power is moving in your life. He said, be endued with power from on high. Jesus is speaking one last time to his disciples in Acts chapter 1, verse 5. We see here in the scriptures where he says, 
John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. And listen, Jesus was testifying to his disciples. He said, listen, fellas, this journey is going to be worth it. What you're fighting through, what you're having to endure, what you're having to go through, it's going to be worth it. I just want you to keep pressing in. I want you to hang on, and I don't want you to give up. Let me tell you, those of you that have been seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit, let me tell you something. Don't you give up. Don't you let the devils lie to you and tell you that this is for somebody else. Don't you let the devils lie to you and tell you it's never going to happen. Don't you let people get you down because you come and you seek and all of a sudden you got 15 gathered around you one prayer time and then you got 10 the next time and you got 5 the next time and then you're praying all by yourself the next time. Let me tell you something. Don't you get weary because people get wearied out. You keep on pressing in and seeking the face of God. You stay in that place of worship. You stay in that place of praise. You stay in that place of peace. You stay in that place of sacrifice before the presence of God and say, God, God, have your way in me. God, I want you to feel me. God, I want to be baptized with the spirit without measure I walk a walk in the same anointing and the fullness of the power of the Holy Ghost that Jesus walked in listen you say preacher that's not possible yes it is the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is the same spirit that now brings us to life again it's the same power of the Holy Ghost The same Holy Ghost that raised Jesus from the dead. The same Holy Ghost that moved on Peter when he walked down the street and the dead people got up. The same Holy Ghost that moved on James when he wrote his book and he taught and taught and preached to those folks in Jerusalem. The same Holy Ghost that moved on John in an island all by himself and gave him the great revelation of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, it's the same Holy Ghost. He has not changed. The same Holy Ghost that moved on the face of the deep at creation. It's the same Holy Ghost I feel stirred in my body right now. I'm telling you, there's a power of the Holy Ghost that God wants to fill you with and all you got to say is God I desire and I'm hungry and I'm going to press in until I see your power and your presence in my life Jesus prophesied and he said listen John, John baptized with water but not many days hence you'll be baptized with the Holy Ghost so all these scriptures all these scriptures clearly testify to the fact that prior to the death the resurrection and ascension of Jesus and the descent of the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. Men were not baptized with the Holy Ghost. Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist, was filled with the Holy Ghost. But there's no biblical record of her receiving the baptism. It's reasonable to assume that both she and Zacharias, who was filled with the Holy Ghost, died many years before, they, before, before Pentecost. But from these scriptures, we can make the following observations. Number one, a person can and has been filled with the Holy Ghost without ever seeing the baptism. We see that the Holy Ghost is with a person before and after regeneration without being in them. There's a lot of teaching out there that when you're saved, that you automatically receive the baptism. I don't believe that because the Scripture teaches that there there were some disciples who had been following the teachings of Christ that Paul came on and he asked them the question, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? So just from that one question, It is a separate experience. Now, I'm not saying that it can't happen all at one time. I've seen it. I was preaching a revival in Reedsville, North Carolina, and this young lady who, trying to think, she looked a certain part. That's about the way I can tell you. She came about the first five minutes of my preaching, she came and slipped in the back door and sat on the back seat. I preached, I gave an altar call, and that young lady made her way from that back seat and come straight up to where I was standing. Throwed her hands up in the air and said, I want to be saved. I saw the track marks from the needles down her arms where she had been shooting dope. And I laid hands on that girl, began to pray for her, and she began to cry out, Jesus, save me, Jesus, save me. And that more we prayed, listen, I, didn't, I prayed for her about 10 minutes. And I prayed with her and sought the face of God with her, and she just kept crying out, Lord, I, I, I receive you as my Savior. And she just cried out. And I want to tell you something. In that moment of her crying out to the Lord, all of a sudden she fell out in the spirit right in the middle of that aisle and began to speak with the most beautiful, eloquent tongues you ever heard in your life. A girl with track marks down her arm, but a girl that just cried out, Lord, save me. So I know it can happen in the same moment. But I also know, and Miss Helen's told me, she sought him for years. To the point that she got so mad, she was like, I don't even want to talk about the baptism. Don't even talk to me about it. You know? So I, you, 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 there's times where, where there is time between. And, and people say, well, preacher, why does God do that? I don't know. I'm not God. I can't answer for him. 
I do know this, that he has timing. He has timing. And we've talked about that. We talked about how when the fullness of time come, that bird, a virgin brought forth the son of the I mean, God had a time for what he did. But I want to tell you this also. God does not give the baptism of the Holy Ghost for you to come in church and shout better. Everybody wants to, sh- everybody wants to shout. Everybody wants the Holy Ghost. Listen, you can go to a ball game and shout. I'm telling you, you can go to a ball game and shout if you want to shout. If you want to get crazy and act weird, go, go, go to some of these college ball games. They get crazy. They get weird. They act the fool. Jesus said, when the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you will have power. But it's to be a witness unto me in Jerusalem, in that same place of worship, in that same place of sacrifice, in that same place of peace, in the, in the community of believers, you'll be a witness of me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in that place of praise, in that place of adoration. You'll be a witness of me. But even in Samaria, to the outcast, to the people that everybody else is saying ain't possible, God said, you're going to be a witness to me, even in the midst of the outcast. And he said, unto the uttermost part of the earth, you'll be a witness unto me. This is the power of the Holy Ghost. In Pentecostal realms and spirit-filled churches, full gospel churches, I see it all the time. People just love to come in and sit around and speak in tongues to one another. What benefit is it? We get hyped up and people, our children are still lost. Our neighbors still don't know Jesus. People in our neighborhood still hungry. Come on now. We, we sit around and we, we, we do all this stuff in, in our little community of, of, of fellowship and we just make ourselves feel good and, and we, oh, Lord, oh, yeah. And we, and we, we just talk in tongues and, and we just bless one another and, and, and there's a world still dying and going to hell. Something's wrong, folks. Can I say it this way, Brother Bruce? I hope you understand what I'm about to say. But as much tongue talking goes on in Pentecostal churches on a Sunday morning, there ought to be so many people running to the altars and getting delivered and getting set free. As much tongue talk as we hear going on in Pentecostal churches on Sunday morning, I mean, there ought to be so much power with that tongue talking. Come on now. That when you go to the restaurant, you're so empowered that people are running to your table and say, I don't know why I'm asking this, but what can I do to be saved? People ought to see you on the street and be whack flagging you down saying, hey, can I, can I talk to you about this man named Jesus? You say, preacher, that's crazy. Let me tell you what can happen when you have the fullness of the Holy Ghost. Jesus was in a boat going to the other side. And the Bible said that when he stepped out of the boat and stepped, put his foot on the seashore, a man out of, of, of gathering, a demoniac man, come running to him. He, listen, he didn't go seeking that man out. That man come seeking Jesus. You know what it was? It was a, listen, when the devil said, the devil began to speak and said, don't tell me the son of God. Don't, don't mess with Just get us out. And listen, there is power in the Holy Ghost. Jesus delivered that man. That man come to where he was. You say, preacher, you're absolutely crazy. When Peter would walk down the street, he didn't have to go seeking people out to pray for him. He just walked down the street and they laid him on the sidewalk and said, if you'll just pass by, his shadow would cast upon people and they would get up. There's power in the Holy Ghost. And listen, it's not a demonstration of you. It's not a demonstration of your talent. It's not a demonstration of your ability. It's a demonstration of the power of God. It's not about what you say. It's not about what you can do. It's the movement and the freedom of the Holy Ghost in your life. As a minister of the gospel, as a man that is baptized with the Holy Ghost, I shouldn't have to go out and promote myself. Are you with me? I shouldn't get everybody to applaud me and tell me how great I am. My life should be a demonstration of bringing glory and honor to Jesus Christ. And that's because if the operation of the Holy Ghost is really taking place in my life, I'm telling you, what people, I, whew, I was teaching a couple of Wednesday nights ago, and I was teaching about this young boy that had sent the call to the missions. And they asked him, said, when did you accept this call? He said, I was at this meeting, and this preacher was preaching. He said, they asked him the question. They said, do you, do you know who the preacher was? He said, I don't remember the name of the preacher. He said, I don't remember the subject he pro- but preached on, but I do know one thing. He said, what? They said, he showed me Jesus. Listen, that's the way it should be. It, it, it shouldn't be about popularity. It shouldn't be about who's up there. It shouldn't be about what they're doing. It 
should be about is Jesus being being exclaimed in the presence of the people. Should people leave the body of uh, body of believers and leave the house of God? What they need to see is Jesus. When we sing our songs, they need to see Jesus. When we preach our messages and teach our lessons, they need to see Jesus. They, they, they might listen. It might not be what you did or what you said. They need to see Jesus. We ought to be a complete testimony and witness of Jesus Christ. And it's not, again, it's not a popularity of Him. It's about making the name of Jesus famous through the power of the Holy Ghost. And He will equip you to be of service for Him and His kingdom. So, so the Holy Ghost is with the person before and after regeneration without being in them. Number three, the baptism of the Holy Ghost was not given to men except Jesus until Jesus was glorified. And this was subsequent to His death, His resurrection, and His ascension. Jesus was the first person to walk in the fullness of the Spirit of God in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And again, the Holy Ghost baptism was not given until Jesus ascended. As long as he was here on earth, the Comforter would not come. Ray Loftus preached the message, and I told you this, but he preached the message, I'm glad he's gone. And the whole, the whole thing was, he's preaching this message from this scripture. Jesus said, if I do not go away, the Comforter will not come. Jesus was here in his bodily form, and he was limited to where his feet were taken. But when Jesus ascended to the Father, the Spirit of God, who is omnipresent, listen, the beauty of it is, is yesterday when you got that phone tree to begin to pray for Paula, it didn't matter where you were when that phone call reached you, the Spirit of God came into that room and began to move. Come on now. Last Sunday when Tabitha and I were sitting in Duke Hospital and we were praying for peace in that room and you were praying for peace for, to come over that family, I don't know what you felt, but I felt the peace of God in that room. I knew that God had come in that room as Johnny took it. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't uh, convulse. He didn't, he didn't do anything crazy like I've seen people die and do. That man just basically had his eyes closed and didn't even move. His last breath, you didn't even know he took it. I mean, it was just that peaceful. God just ushered him right into his presence. Let me tell you something, friend. There, there is something that can happen when we can get a hold of the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God can come to where you are. <laughs> John on an island all by himself, and God showed up and said, I know where you're at, and began to speak to, where him, speak to him in a powerful way. Let me tell you, I don't care how dark of a cavern you feel like you're in. I don't care how dark of a hole you feel. I don't care how far gone you think you've gone. I'm telling you, the Spirit of God can come to where you are. He can come to where you are. And listen, He not only wants to be with you, but He wants to be in you. He wants to be in you. Now let me pastor just a moment. Come on, Kessler, because I'm going to have to cut this one short as long as you, one of y'all play. Let me pastor just a moment. Let me tell you something. A Holy Ghost-filled person is going to resemble the Holy Ghost. A Holy Ghost-filled person is not going to resemble uh, you, your bad habits, your way of thinking, your thoughts, your talk. Matter of fact, I continue to pray to God, Lord, today, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, God, be acceptable in your sight. You know why? Because there's times that old joy wants to come up and old joy wants to get himself in trouble. And I have to say, no, not today. God, be glorified in my life. They were singing that song just a moment ago about David, the psalm of David, where it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. All that is within me, bless his holy name. You know, you know what that, that, song, that psalm is literally saying? David is telling himself, I know you're weak in the flesh. I know you've been up against some battles. I know there's some hard things that you faced. I know that friends have turned on you. I know that people that you thought were close are no longer close anymore. He said, but in the midst of all this, bless the Lord, O my soul. All that's within me, you bless his holy name. He commanded his soul. He said, listen, your flesh may be weak, but my soul is going to rise up and I'm going to bless the name of the Lord. There's times where you have to trump your flesh and say to your body and say to your flesh, today you will not rule. Today your, your desires your inhibitions, your, your, your weaknesses, you will not rule today. Today, I am submitting myself to the Spirit of God, and I am going into His presence. And today, God, I'm saying, have your way in my life. You know, it would be awesome. 
if every Sunday we could walk in with that attitude. Today, flesh, you're not going to have your way. Today, thoughts of tomorrow, you're not going to have your way. Today, wild thinking and, and tiredness and, and inability, you're not having your way today. Today, I'm pressing in to the presence of God. And so, bless the Lord. So, cry out to God. Let the Holy Spirit have His way. Move and manifest His glory in His presence. There's absolutely no reason if we've truly come into the presence of God why people should leave this building despondent, tired, sick. If we're in the presence of God, the Bible tells us that when Jesus was there, that they brought all that were sick to Him and He healed them all. I want to tell you something. If Jesus and the Spirit of God is truly in the building, there's absolutely no reason. If you run from this place, that's exactly what you're going to do. You're going to have to run from the presence of God, and He's going to run after you. If you're in this building today and you're sick and you feel down and out, just like Sheila came to this in front of this building Wednesday night and said, Lord, I need you to heal me. And God healed her. Let me tell you, if Jesus is in the house and Jesus is getting glorified, I'm telling you, that's where God can move in and he can have his way. This is the fullness of God's spirit that he wants us to have. The fullness. The fullness. So as I close, I want you to make, make sure that you make, do not make one mistake. Do not fall into the trap of seeking gifts. Do not fall into the trap of seeking evidences. Because there are people that fall into the trap of seeking the evidence of the Holy Ghost. And once they receive the evidence of the Holy Ghost, now in their mind, they're thinking, I've arrived. Let me tell you something. It's far more than the evidence. That's just to say, I'm here. And you know what he says then? Let's get to working. Come on now. Some of us, we arrive and we get to that place and we're like, Whoa, boy, that's good. You know, if I'd have got to that restaurant and just sat in that table and never got any food, I'd have been upset. Well, the waitress could have said, well, you got here. I didn't just come here to get here. I come here to get what was mine and to do what I needed to do to, and get empowered so that I can move on. That's the whole purpose of eating is get my flesh the strength that it needs that it can move on. That's the whole reason I go into the presence of God. I don't go in there and pray, now lay me down to sleep. I pray my Lord to soul the key. No, I press into the presence of God and say, God, I need you. My spirit man needs you. I got to have strength for this journey that's ahead of me. That's the beauty of walking in the spirit of God, to be empowered with the presence of God, to be strengthened for the journey that's ahead. Father, we need you today. We need you, Jesus. To come into this place of worship, this, this building that has been designated as a house of worship, your house. This is a place that you called us to come and tarry, to dwell. It's a place that you called us together as a body of believers to seek your face until we be endued with power. So many folks today, God, they they bought into the, the premise and the lie that their initial experience is enough to keep them. But, Lord, every day I cry out to you and say, I need you today. More than I needed you yesterday, I need you. So, Father, all across this room, I pray for those that are desperate, those that are hungry, those that want and long for a move of your presence, God, and more of your presence in their life. I'm asking you today, by the power of the Holy Ghost, the drawing of your spirit, God, that you would move in people right now. Stir that gift up that's inside of them, Lord. Burn a hunger and a desire inside of them, Lord, for more of you. I pray in the name of Jesus. 
In the name of Jesus. There's someone here this morning that doesn't know you as their Savior. Today, Spirit of God, draw them to your presence. There's someone here today, God, that's got some, some things going on in their life that causes them to be unclean before your presence. Sanctify them today. Change hearts and minds and attitudes. Spirit of God, fill with your spirit today the fullness of who you are. I pray in the name of Jesus. We want a fresh experience in you, God. We long for a fresh experience of your presence, your anointing, your spirit, I pray in the name of Jesus. Have your way this morning. Have your way this morning. So every head bowed and every eye closed for just a moment. All across this room. You may be here this morning. You feel empty. You may be here this morning. You feel so far away. Distance from the presence of God. Then again, you may be here this morning. You say, Pastor, you know, I, I'm on a quest, man. I, I feel God near me, but man, there's so much more I long for. No matter what end of the spectrum you're on, David said in the book of Psalms 53 and 2 that there was a day that God looked down upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand that did seek Him. We're living in some perilous times and if we've ever needed more of His Spirit, more of His presence, more of His power, it's today. It's today. So Father, today I pray that you would all across this room, begin to move in people's hearts and lives. Stir up in them a hunger and a desire to seek you. To seek you. You said when we seek for you with all our heart, you'll be found. So that's my prayer for folks today, God. That's my prayer for folks today. No matter what end of the spectrum you're on, you say, Pastor, that's me. I'm I'm, I'm just on a journey to find more of Him, to find more of His presence. I, I, you might feel like you're so far down the road from Him, and you might feel like you're walking with Him, but you're saying, there's more I want, there's more I desire. Today, would you come and spend some time in this altar and just continue your journey and seek His face? Would you take this moment of corporate prayer and spend time in His presence and allow God to minister to you no matter where you are? No matter what's going on in your life, would you come? Would you come and seek the face of God? Come on, these altars are open. Would you come? Seek His face. Seek His presence. Seek His glory. Don't become weary and well-doing, but go after the presence of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, come on, all that will come and spend some time in the presence of God. All that will, come on. Let God speak to you right now. Father, we... We desire a move of the Holy Ghost, but not to, not to glorify us, but to glorify you. God, we desire a move of the Holy Ghost, but not to lift us up, but to lift you up, Jesus. We desire a move of the Holy Ghost, not to build our kingdom, but to build yours, God. I pray in the name of Jesus. All across this room, God, as people are seeking your face and praying and talking to you, God, I pray, Lord, that you would stir up inside of them a move of your presence. A deeper desire, God, to, stake, to, to take off the things of the world, take off the things, God, that, that don't matter. God, to, to move into your presence, God, that they could just be ushered into your glory and walk in that power of your anointing. Not so that they can have evidences and say, hey, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, but God, that they could be living epistles, they could be ministers of the gospel. Effective for your kingdom, I pray in the name of Jesus. 
Lord, I pray that we we not get caught in the trap of them. Of thinking that we're in a movement because we're seeing signs, but God, that we're in a movement because we're seeing results. God, I don't want to be lost in, in the fray of shouting and sweating and speaking in tongues and going through all the motions we go through. That, that, that's, all, that's all part of it, but God, that's not all of it. God, you empower us for service. You empower us to be witnesses. You empower us to pray with the sick that they can recover, to, to see those that are bound, released, to feed the hungry, to give drink to the thirsty. God, you empower us for service to be witnesses, to cast out devils, to heal the sick. God, to see mighty things happen in people's lives. This is the empowerment of the Spirit in our lives. I pray, God, that we would begin to walk in the Spirit, not fulfill the lust of the flesh, God. There's so many desires, so many selfish desires that we all have. But, God, we need a move of the Spirit in our life. Deep hunger. Deep hunger. Deep hunger moving us oh God all across this room God move in your people give us a deeper hunger a deeper desire God for your presence help us oh God help us Jesus Hallelujah, God. Have your way, Jesus. As it was on Pentecost. Come on. And on the sixth day, we are all with one accord. And we are gathered in one place. And in your presence, presence you're the potter with the clay. Every part of our being, we are crying and pleading. Breathe on me, breathe on me, fill this place with the breath of heaven. Folks, I need you to I need you to bind up together. Uh, Je- Jessica Fresina was having a cesarean this morning, and we just got a message that she's lost a lot of blood and they're concerned. We need to pray for her. So, if we, would you bind up with someone next to you? Jessica is the young lady, the blonde-headed young lady that's having a baby. We're gonna pray, believe for God to touch her right now. 
We know God can do it. She's at Gaston Memorial Hospital, and God can go into that room right now and touch her and strengthen her. So lift up Jessica, if you will, that God would touch her. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bind together as a body of believers. We pray, Lamb of God, that you would move in that room right now. God, that you would touch Dave and that you would touch Angie and the family, that you would give them peace. But God, more than that, that you would touch Jessica, Lord, right now. She's worshiped you. She loves you. She serves you. And God, I pray right now, God, that whatever's going on in her body, you're a God of reversal. And Father, we pray right now, God, that you would begin to give her strength in her body. God, you could put blood in her body. You could cause her to have the strength that the doctors say, I don't know what's happening, but something's happening. God, we call it spontaneous reversal. So, God, we just pray for spontaneous reversal in her life right now in the name of Jesus. God, that you begin to move and minister to her right now. These body of believers bind together. If we pray in agreement, Lord, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would do a healing in her. God, that your name would be glorified and that you would be exalted. God, I do pray again that you would touch David, Lord, that you would minister to him. Lord, I know that there's a lot of things that he he uh, he battles with, he don't understand, especially in our our realm of worship. But God, let him see your power and your strength, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Let him know and testify, God, that you moved and you ministered and you made a way, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Move in that family, God. Strengthen them and encourage them, I pray, in Jesus' name. I know, God, that you're able to do that. We're believing you for that, Lord God. We're believing you for that, Jesus. Let your will be done. Let your name be glorified, Lord. And we believe you for it in Jesus' name. 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 Hallelujah. Oh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we bind the powers of the enemy. These attacks that are coming upon our people, we come against it right now. This attack that you tried to pull on Paula yesterday in her body, what you're trying to do in Jessica, we come against you right now in the name of Jesus. The, the, the attack in the minds, the attack in the emotions, the attack of, of, of trying to isolate people, we come against you right now in the name of Jesus. We take authority over you in Jesus' name. Father, your word declares what we bind shall be bound and what we loose shall be loosed. And we stand on the authority of your word right now. And we declare healing and, and, and freedom and liberty in the lives of our people. God, that you would speak to them and manifest your glory and your presence in their life like only you can do. We're sick and tired of the lies of the enemy. We're sick and tired of the lies of the devil trying to cause us to fall backwards when you call us to go forwards. And Father, we move in your presence right now, God. We just, we just pray and believe and, 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 and speak. Your, your power, your strength, God, that you would bind the powers of hell and loose the beauty of heaven in our lives, God, I pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, let your will be done. Let your name be glorified, I pray in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, come on, if you believe it's done, would you lift your hands and thank Him? If you believe God's doing something, if you believe God's doing something, I believe you today, Jesus. We bless your holy name, God. I bless your holy name, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah, God. We bless your name, Jesus. You are worthy. We worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Lamb of God. Hallelujah, Lamb of God. Hallelujah, Lamb of God. Bless your name, Jesus. We worship you, Lord God. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Lamb of God. Bless your name, God. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. I was listening to the radio this week, and I was listening to a minister speak, and he was talking about magnifying the Lord. And, you know, when, and, I, and I even had to check myself when I heard him say this, because what he said was true. He said, you know, we've always, we've always thought about magnifying the Lord as we making God bigger. But it's not about making God bigger. It's about seeing God bigger. God's a spirit. He encompasses the whole universe. You can't make God bigger. You just got to see God bigger. I like that. That was awesome. That minister at the funeral yesterday, he was talking about a message his dad preached. He said, his dad said in the message, I don't know what God's going to do, but I know God's going to do something. Sometimes you got to have that confidence. God, I don't know what you're going to do, but I, gonna, I know you're going to do something. 
All you got to do is keep seeking. Keep pressing in. Keep persevering. We're going to see God make us, help us get through this thing. It's absolutely amazing to me, the, the ministers and the people that I'm beginning to hear talking about Pentecost and the day of Pentecost and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we celebrate Pentecost in the first week in June, and, and that's what we're working toward. And it might take me that long to get through this series. And there's a lot that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the baptism of the Holy Ghost as he moves within the services. We're going to talk about what God has empowered us to do outside in the world. There's a lot that God wants to do, and I want these that are seeking him and want more of him, I want them just to press in. And I'm believing that God's going to do something in this ministry because I, wanna, I, want, I, wanna, I want you to know, first and foremost, this ministry is not about me. It's not about you. It's about him. And if we keep him first in priority, I'm telling you, God will show up, and God will show his greatness and his glory. Look around the room today, folks. There's, there's, there's quite a few folks that are not here, and there's some reasons why it's explained. There's some reasons why it's not. We need to pray for one another. If you don't see someone here, pray for them. Pray that God would touch them and strengthen them. Some we know why they're not, some we don't know. But we need to pray because I'm going to tell you, there is an attack of the enemy. There is an attack of the enemy where he is attacking people. And I saw it full-fledged yesterday, but I also saw God move in and say, not today, devil. And I tell you, he'll do the same for you. He's a good, faithful God. My daughters and Rachel and, and Sam and Beth, they were in the waiting room at the, at the hospital yesterday, at the emergency room. And, and there's a precious lady that watches the door that I converse with a lot. And I was in the back with Roger, and we were talking with the doctors and stuff. And uh, Tracy shows me a video later. The girls and all of them was in the emergency room, waiting room. They just began to sing praises unto the Lord, singing out, He's a good, good Father. You can hear people in the back going, Woo! People talking about, man, that right there is something, man. They, 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 there are some people, they were thinking, oh, they need to go on the voice. No, they need to sing to the one that's a voice. Amen? Amen. I was like, wow. God was just doing it in a mighty way. I'm telling you, when you begin to understand and realize that he's a good, good father, that he will move and minister in your life, and he will do what he wants to do in your life, I'm telling you, in his time, in his purpose, he's going to, bring, he's going to be glorified to the fullness of and when he does it, watch out. Hang on, because it's going to be some more ride. Amen. I believe God's going to do it. Stephanie, I'm believing when it happens, girl, we're going to have to hold on. Because I believe an explosion is going to happen. And God's going to do it. And it's absolutely going to blow our minds what God's going to do. Amen. Just hang on. Keep hanging on. We're going to see God do this thing. Amen. I want these to continue to pray, seek the face of God as long as they need to. Let God do it in their life. I believe that God's going to do it. Don't forget about the service tonight. If you're singing, don't forget 530. Be here so we can do sound check and all that good stuff. Make sure everything's good to go. If you got any questions about that, see Kelsey. Uh, we're just looking forward to a great time of the Lord. If you if you signed up to bring something tonight, please make sure you do that. Don't forget about the other announcements and things we talked about this week. And uh, if, you, if, you, if you're looking for something to bring, you, is the sheet still out there on the desk? There might be something that's blank. If you're looking for something to bring, there's, there's still some other stuff that probably needs to be brought. And... Uh, if nothing else, bring yourself and let's fellowship and love the Lord. Have a great time in God's presence tonight. And uh, we just believe for a great time of fellowship. I love you. I appreciate you. Please be respectful of these that are continuing to pray. God bless you. Have a great afternoon. We'll see you this evening.